An acoustic neuroma is a benign tumor at the base of the brain. It would be on either the right or the left, or sometimes both. Um, and it involves the vestibular cochlear nerve, which is a nerve for balance and hearing. Um, and it's associated with the nerve for facial movement. And that's why those three functions, hearing, balance, and facial movement, are all related to the diagnosis of this tumor. Typical symptoms that lead to the diagnosis would be hearing loss on one side and asymmetric hearing loss. So uh, someone would say, hey, boy, I can't use the telephone like I used to. Or when I'm driving in the car, uh, I can't hear my spouse sitting on, my, on the right side. Another way would be with lack of balance. So someone says, well, I just don't feel as steady on my feet. I notice that I'm walking with my uh, feet further apart. When I make turns, I feel a little bit unstable. So from a patient perspective, um, after the suggestion of the diagnosis of acoustic neuroma is made, typically by a family physician or perhaps an ENT surgeon in the community, the patient's often sent in. And the first thing we'll do is uh, a physical examination and review of the imaging. And then typically the workup includes audiometry, which is a very formalized hearing test. And if it's in the ENT department, they typically do balanced nerve testing at the same time. And then the ENT and the neurosurgeon sit down together, look at the size of the tumor, the location of the tumor, the patient's hearing status, which is critically important, and say really with those three things and perhaps their age and medical condition as well as a fourth important parameter, what's the best approach for this patient. Thankfully, our tumors uh, are benign and slow growing in nature. And so in general, the patient has lots of time to investigate their options. And many patients will choose to observe the tumor to see what the rate of growth is. Because if the hearing is excellent and they're not having consequential symptoms, they may wish to defer treatment. And that's perfectly sensible in a benign, slow-growing tumor. On the other hand, as they get larger, they're harder to treat. And if you wait until after the hearing has been compromised, the chance of having hearing after treatment is significantly reduced. And so these are complicated discussions that we have with our patients on a regular basis. When a patient comes in with that diagnosis, they usually have a lot on their mind. It's a very big decision to make, and um, our job here is to really embrace them and help them and educate them on all the options uh, and what um, is best for them. We are fortunate here that we have a significant amount of expertise that allows us to offer everything, all options, and it really focuses on the patient and their own needs. So treatment for acoustic neuroma generally kind of divided into two main categories. The first is microsurgical resection, which is basically removal of the tumor. And the second is uh, stereotactic radiation treatment, which really kind of uses a focus radiation to uh, try to attempt and prevent the tumor from growing. The microsurgical resection approaches really are two different categories. One, which is mainly used for um, larger tumors that precludes hearing preservation, or for when the hearing is already lost, it's called a translabyrinthine approach, and by default, it does not preserve hearing. The other two approaches are used when the patient has good hearing and we're trying to preserve it. So one is called the middle cranial fossa approach. In, in this approach, we kind of approach the um, tumor from an area above the ear. And the other option is the uh, posterior fossa or the retrosigmoid approach, where we approach the tumor kind of behind the ear. So the translabyrinthine, which is the non-hearing preservation approach, we really go through the ear, through the inner ear, through the bone behind the ear. The choice of treatment option depends on several factors. It depends on the tumor size, depends on the tumor location, depends on the hearing uh, status of the uh, patient in the ear that is involved with the tumor, depends on the patient medical condition, and again, above all, the patient's preference and decision after being informed and educated about this condition. 
The team that we've assembled to work on this particular type of tumor is consisting of two different medical specialties, neurosurgery and otolaryngology. Otolaryngologists are ear, nose, and throat surgeons. And those of us who go on to additional training in uh, this type of surgery are called neurootologists. Neurootologists have two years of additional training beyond residency to learn these various approaches and the pre-op evaluation and the post-operative care of patients with this problem. We're experts in facial nerve management, dizziness management, hearing rehabilitation, and all the things that might be needed by a patient who's had treatment for this. So if surgery is selected as the treatment, um, any one of the three microsurgical approaches, the typical hospital stay would be three to four days. A uh, patient would uh, be discharged, usually go uh, home, and then come back within a week to 10 days to have uh, the staples or sutures removed, and then would follow up usually again at about a month after surgery. During that First week after surgery, they might experience problems with balance, a little bit of uh, disequilibrium, but those symptoms typically resolve within just a few days after surgery. I would say that uh, with respect to research here at the University of Michigan, our, our main thrust clinically has been uh, with regard to hearing preservation, and I think that's where we've made our biggest impact uh, because we're starting to treat uh, candidates for hearing preservation at a much younger age. We're beginning to think that we can change the trajectory of their life with perhaps hearing preservation for a much longer period of time uh, by treating them earlier when the tumor is smaller and their hearing is better. Therefore, having a candidate who is much more likely to preserve hearing.